Welcome back. Week two of the little action camera roundup I have going on. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the DJI Action 2. Uh, next week, we're gonna be talking about the GoPro Hero 10. Last week, we talked about the Insta360 Go 2. The, bleh, link to that video in the description. <laughs> So today, I'm gonna to go through the pros of the DJI Action 2, go through some of the cons, and give my kind of view on what kind of consumer would best benefit from this camera. Starting out with the pros of the DJI Action 2 is its compact size. Uh, it is definitely bigger than the Insta360 Go, but coming in at, I mean, give or take 56 grams uh, with its battery on board, it is incredibly compact. Uh, for what it does. It is a great image sensor. It has a touch screen on the back, battery built in. It lasts uh, recording about 20-ish uh, minutes, give or take. And it does 4K uh, 60 recording and all sorts of other resolutions beyond that. But for me, I kind of stick to 4K 60. That's usually my go-to. Uh, it'll record in uh, portrait, it'll record in vertical video, and obviously it records in square uh, shaped video. Depending on where you want to post it, you can record in whatever image shape you would like. Uh, I tend to record in 4.3, so that way I can just crop it down to whatever image size that I need, whether it's 16 by 9, 9 by 16, or 1 to 1 square. The camera also has built-in memory, uh, so you don't technically have to fumble around with SD cards. It has uh, 32 gigabytes of storage on board, uh, but it only has 22 gigabytes of usable storage. That does record about 45 minutes or so of footage in total at 4K60 uh, in the 4x3 aspect ratio, which I would say is generally enough for most people. Uh, for 45 minutes doesn't sound like a long time, but when you're actually watching back footage, 45 minutes is pretty, pretty uh, long. <laughs> we'll go with that. Instead of having traditional GoPro-like feet, this has a very similar system to the Insta360 Go with the addition of these little uh, clawed clips on each side of the camera. So it is a little bit sturdier than just having the magnet itself, this little bug on the lens. Similar to the Insta360 Go also, instead of having a traditional like harness style chest mount. This has a little pennant that you wear underneath your shirt and then the camera magnets itself onto it. I think it is a little sturdier than the Insta360 GOES magnet, but mileage may vary on that one. Because of the magnets, the DJI Action 2 is also hyper convenient to switch mounts. Whether you're switching it from the additional uh, power module slash extra screen, that is on the Action 2, or you're moving it to the little finger mount because it does have an accessory that allows you to attach it to all your traditional GoPro mounts. It's very easy to swap this quickly from one mount to the next. So convenience factor for this thing's mounting, very, very high. Next big pro for the DJI Action 2 is the app. Similar to Insta360 Go, I think DJI nailed the app. It's easy to use, fast, easy to share to different platforms, easy to edit video. It is very intuitive and it also performs very well on both Android and iOS. The last pro for the DJI is gonna be a bit weird because it's gonna start as a pro and kind of end also as a con. So the DJI Action 2, it does not have additional storage on board, it does not have a user replaceable battery, and it does not have a USB port on it. But unlike the Insta360 Go and its case thing, it does have what's, I believe they're calling it like a mod, but it's basically a little um, magnet system to other bases. And the base that comes with the standard package for the DJI Action 2 includes an SD card slot, a forward facing screen, additional battery life, three extra microphones, and a USB port. The reason why I call this both a pro and a con is because you do have extra battery life. You gain a huge amount of extra functionality, both from the screen and the microphone and the additional battery. And it's convenient because you can actually export footage from the SD card, or sorry, from the onboard storage to the SD card. So you effectively do have an easy way to download footage off the camera body itself. It also means you have to carry an extra accessory. It also means to charge the camera you need the extra accessory. So it's a little bit of a headache. It would be nice if there was an SD card 
on the camera module itself, uh, which also is waterproof. So uh, that is waterproof. The bottom half with the extra microphones, battery and SD card reader is not waterproof. So if you're going in the water, you can't carry that extra piece. So it's, it's kind of this weird uh, kind of positive and negative. It does mean you get that enormously wonderful form factor. It does mean it's not a perfect camp. Let's now talk about the cons, uh, including that one, of the DJI Action 2. Let's start out with battery life and storage, because that's kind of what we were just talking about. Only having that uh, 22 gigs of onboard storage does mean that if you're flying a couple of packs uh, with your drone, or say you're filming your kid for a while, you do have to plug it into that external module, making it no longer waterproof, um, download your footage, charge the battery a little bit. It is a little bit of a headache and does mean it kind of interrupts your flow for filming. Um, but yeah, it, it's just kind of a little bit of an annoyance and something you do have to think about as far as your workflow goes. Uh, you can still record with that other module attached. I do believe you can get a waterproof housing that does encase both the camera itself and that additional module, but it does affect the quality of the microphones. Speaking of that, this camera only really has a single microphone on it when it's being used in just its little waterproof uh, small form factor. Uh, this may not be a big deal for most people, but it is something you do have to consider again. Uh, it means that some of the other cameras in this comparison will have slightly better audio. You can buy additional modules for the camera, which is nice. So unlike the Insta360 Go, where you just have that single charge case, you can get basically additional batteries. So if you need more than that first battery and screen combo can provide, you can add additional batteries to your setup, allowing you to have longer recording time, uh, provided you have the storage space on your SD card and can offload the footage. So I'm saying it's a con because once again, that extra battery is not natively waterproof. It is an extra accessory you have to buy. It's not immensely convenient, but it is better than not having the option at all. To finish out the cons list, the last thing I want to mention is that the lens is not user replaceable. You can still get ND filters that magnet onto the front of the camera, but you can't replace the actual lens itself. So I would recommend if you're going to buy a DJI Action 2, I would highly recommend getting it from Best Buy, getting that accident replacement warranty, because if you scratch that front lens, if you crack that front lens or break that front lens, you can't replace it. Uh, you have to replace the camera, which is kind of a big bummer, especially if you're flying it with FPV, when you're likely to crash into things that might break that lens. But and again, minor little thing, but something again, you do have to consider. I think the ideal buyer for this camera is very similar to the Insta360 GO 2. It's gonna be somebody who wants convenience, who wants uh, easy to use. The advantage here is a lot of the accessories do cross pollinate to GoPro because you do have that magnetic foot or uh, magnetic finger mount that can go into the traditional GoPro uh, finger mount things. <laughs> I don't have a better name for it. It's just a weird mount. Um, <clears throat> the big advantage over the Insta360 Go is the image quality. The only downside is you can't reframe uh, or turn on the image stabilization after you record the footage. You do have to do that beforehand, but I do think the image stabilization in the DJI is awesome. So overall, I would say this is a major upgrade to the Insta360 Go 2 if you are the person that it fits. Not everybody's gonna need that extra resolution or want to deal with it. I think if you're just posting to Instagram, uh, TikTok, any of those sites, the Insta360 Go 2 is a perfect camera for you. But if you want something that can record stuff for YouTube, or you just wanna have higher fidelity home movies, that DJI Action I think is worth that upgrade. If you're flying FPV, also think it's a great upgrade from the Insta360 Go 2 because it does have just a better image quality overall. You do get a little less uh, jello. I have found some vibration in jello in the Insta360 Go footage uh, when recording on a quad. It's not too bad, definitely manageable and usable. With that said, thank you all for joining me on today's video. Stay tuned, subscribe, like the video. Next week, we're gonna talk about the GoPro Hero 10, which all this is recorded on, and I hope you join me for that video. Thank you all for joining me. Peace, bye.